I'm coming to you from nearing the bite. We've just left uh, Water Village and um, hooked down to a spot. Now the bloke that landed the drone for me, you might know who you are. Thank you very much. You sent me down to here and said it's a great spot to uh, see the ocean and see the uh, see the sandy dunes before you disappear further down towards Bunda Cliffs. So uh, great spot. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, Jude loves it. Just one or two horseflies around. That one, that one dug a little deeper than normal. Ah. So there you go. Woo. There you have the uh, the van. And we've been able to park up on the dune. Look at that. So I think the telegraph station is down that way, four-wheel drive track. And um, if I was tempted, I could probably go down and uh, go see the beach. I don't think it's too far. Can't quite find a defined trail just. I can see a few little trails. Don't want to risk it just in case I break my neck. <laughs> but uh, she sure is a terrific spot before we hit the, the cliffs further behind me. So the, the weather, as you can see from my circle, isn't too bad. There's a little bit of darkness in behind, and the wind is not as strong as it probably could be right here, so we're pretty lucky. Whether we do um, a night, maybe two nights, we'll see how we go. But uh, this is our location for today. Awesome spot. Thanks for watching. Keep tuned, sweet as RVing. Like, follow, subscribe, please. And it's free. All right, I haven't got the day that I really wanted. It's a little, uh, little overcast, little windy. Good night's sleep last night though, it was good. Um, I think having a, maybe the RV, I mean, put it in the comments. I think these guys are a little bit more stable in the wind than maybe a caravan being the weight. Um, even though I don't have stabilizers, but obviously the four wheels are in a bit further four corners of the, the van, but it was a good night's sleep. Even though the wind was up, we were good. Um, so today I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little try to get down to the, down to the dunes and the beaches over there. Looks pretty exciting place to be. And uh, got nice patches of little blue sky sort of coming through, so should be all right. So uh, bear with me as I uh, try and find a spot down the uh, down the hill. It looks fairly okay, just uh, a bit further down. It's, I've had a little uh, investigation, and there looks like a bit of a trail down here. Get through the little scrubby stuff down there, and boom, out onto the beach. So looking forward to putting my toes in the ocean down there. Hopefully this will record okay. I'm stuck in between two sand dunes. Whew. Well, that was the sand dune I was on. I was on that sand dune way up there, and man, what a cracker of a view. Absolutely awesome. So I've walked off of that. Come on down to the beach. Boom. There it is. The ocean. And you still can't get away from the horse flies here. Oh. Or march flies, whatever you call them. I'm going to have a little walk along the beach. I'll take you down there now and see how windy it is once I cross this, uh, this little dune here. Oh, the sand. It's the last time I had sand in between my toes. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, it's a cuttlefish. Here we have it. Oh, 
go and dip the toes in the ocean. Judging by the uh, water pattern here, some of those waves come up a fair way, so better be careful. Here we go. I have not, to my recollection, really put my foot in the southern Australia ocean. Here we go. Yep. It's nippy. Yeah, it'll take me a while to get the whole body in the water. You wouldn't want to do it in a hurry. No, you'd have to do it in a hurry. Alright, yeah. oh, it's not, not too bad. Dean, what have you got on the menu tonight? Well, the wind is blowing big time as you can probably guess. I'm, I'm being challenged here big time. But uh, we've got some chops, garlic, a bit of honey soy, and some mushrooms. And I'm going to do my best. But hey, one thing, horse flies aren't bait, bait biting me. I think that's because they don't like hurricane force winds. But hey, what a backdrop. Look at that. I love it. It's gonna be alright. Where's this sizzle? We're looking good. Um, yeah, I ran out of gas, so I had to go and quickly get another gas bottle, but I think I've recovered. And uh, thank heavens for some of the fries down at the old border village. We've reheated those, and they look good. Mushrooms, and you've got a bit of a salad going on inside. I think we better retire and enjoy that view from our lounge window. <laughs> <laughs> really looking forward to a romantic dinner with a view. Yep, she's a beauty. And oh, I was going to invite the neighbours, but there's none around.
right. Well, hopefully it's not too windy here. It's your magic day. Real good. Here, dark clouds behind me, but look out here. This is where, this is what matters when you're out here and you're looking at the great Australian bike. Oh, I'm a bit risky. It's probably got my head out here now. A bit risky having my head out here, but I'm not going to go too close. I mean, you can see by uh, probably just over my shoulder, there's a little uh, bit of subsidence there so you've got to be real careful out here you, you might think you're on a bit of terra firma but under, underneath she's undercut in a big way so uh pretty crazy um especially if jude sticks the drone out i think we'll be quite surprised how much it dives away but there it is we're looking west to the great australian bite awesome can you imagine it out here just watching the whales there was some reviews that there were some dolphins out there but uh, it is truly an amazing sight to see and you can see where the van is parked on oh, it's amazing oh it's mesmerizing just to watch it from here oh those waves it's a beautiful spot so just swinging around i think we're at the uh, what they call like a i think it was 114 peg i think it was a little bit uh probably not the smoothest track and i think that the track where we were at uh, 10k peak was smoother than this but uh it's definitely pretty hard when you're on this sort of area but yeah there you go there's the van and there's the bite ah. and it's nice to say not too windy so it uh, should be a lovely uh lovely sunset hopefully and uh, the bloke that's here he said it was a good sunrise this morning so uh Look forward to cop on that one. With the time difference, it's uh, made it a little hard to sort of judge what time of the day it really is. But it's actually about, um, I think it's about 8.30. So um, look at that, isn't that? The sun's shining on the edge of the cliffs there. We're at the Bunda Cliffs. Just about, um, I, I'm thinking it was about 100 k's shy of the um, the Nullarbor Roadhouse, I think it was. But uh, gorgeous. So a few campers there, here comes the wind. We were just parked there and down in the distance there the old sun's rising that's the east of course but ah glorious spot hey um yeah, just those people that come here please be careful the undercut of this cliff edge is um quite severe in some places and um yeah it's just a bit nail biting when you see people just in awe of this spot come running out and stand on that edge it's just yeah, the heart it stops your heart beating you go holy moly but uh no, everybody was pretty pretty well behaved and, and enjoying what what we've got here just mother nature at her best day it's awesome um starry nights oh, 
they were wicked. There was one or two patchy bits of cloud about, but the stars were just awesome. I was surprised actually how much um, light pollution there was. I guess it was the big trucks just um, streaming along the highway, which isn't far from here. But um, it wasn't probably the best night for stargazing that I've had. Probably that Northern Territory takes the cake. But um, I think the the brightness of the stars were a lot more brighter out here so uh, yeah awesome spot so um, and oh the people you meet met a couple um, last night thank you very much uh, Gary and Joan I think it was <sighs> been Taupo just like us so uh, it's a small world when you can bump into people from the same town in you know middle of nowhere <laughs> anyway we're gonna crank on a um, couple of hours drive I think Penyong and um, we are going to pay for um, some accommodation there and uh, get some power on, get some water on and empty the you know what. <laughs> enough, enough of that, here we go. Next journey. Oh, quick trip down the road, probably about an hour. We come to a uh, another iconic little spot along the Nullarbor. The Nullarbor Roadhouse. We just passed a sign back there that said it was the, um, what was it, the western end of the Nullarbor with the treeless plains. So, yeah, we don't see too many trees around. And obviously, going that way is the eastern, so western down that way, eastern over that way. So, here it is a recreation of the Nullarbor Roadhouse way back in the day. There we go. The old servo back then. Boy, crikey. So they've just gone basically, oh, I guess the building itself is pretty much the way it was. And here's the store. There we go. At 19 Nullarbor Homestead, 1954. Nullarbor Homestead Caravan Park. The park such as it was in 1950s. Holy smokes. And as I say, Jude's mum and dad came through in 1965. What's this here? The construction of the golf, of the Nullarbor Golf Club opening 1991. Deepest. And then next door, I guess, used to have a little little shop next door here where they uh, did some of the repairs there's a workshop a little garage door at the end <laughs> Nullarbor Hotel Motel great little site there we go Jude's mum and dad came through in 1965 and the road wasn't sealed. It should have come through in 1976. Good morning. Hopefully this comes okay and there's not too much wind noise. It is a, still up a little bit. But what a glorious, glorious morning. Uh, quite a few campers here. A few of them already left. It's uh, uh, well, the, with, the, with the time differences, it's, it's making it a little bit tricky. So, from, from, <laughs> with the time, I sound like we're even talking figures. Oh, that's all, folks. Um, 